hold on, let me bring up the chat so I can see. Oh, yeah. So, okay, got a thumbs up from Kez. Okay. And can, yes, yes, okay. Can y'all see the, uh, like the chat box and the little video box on the sides here? I want to be able to see those so I can see everybody and see, uh, see the chat in case we pop in a question, but I don't want to, I don't want to obstruct your view <laughs> of anything. Let me know. Or you just, you, all you see is the root chakra gateway to earth energy, right? Okay. Bet. All right, let's go. So uh, life force energy and chakras uh, course. Lesson four, we're getting into the chakras now. So uh, for anybody who uh, hasn't viewed it yet, please uh, do yourself a favor and watch the first three lessons talking about your outer source of life force energy, your inner source of life force energy, what they are, what to do with them, how to work with them, different exercises that were given in those lessons, um, and then an overview of the chakras, as well as like the endocrine glands um, that are associated with each chakra so that you know, you know, if there's, you know, you kind of feel like there's more work that you need to do with a certain chakra or something to, to kind of balance it out, to strengthen it, you can look at what endocrine gland is associated with it. Then you can look at what um, different herbs or foods stimulate that gland, which ones, um, you know, de degenerate that gland, you know, to, to look at how to work physically with something to help strengthen and remove any kind of negative energy uh, associated with that chakra for yourself or vice versa. If you um, have some sort of ailment um, going on that is associated with one of those glands, like a hypothyroid gland or hyperthyroid gland or something like that, then you can look at the chakra associated with it and understand how to do through these next series of lessons, seven lessons, um, how to work with that chakra to help balance out that physical gland, you know, because they are vice, vice versa. But anyways, um, so, so encouraging you to go back and uh, check out those videos if you haven't already, um, or if you want to dive deeper and just really further deepen that uh, information into your mind, um, go back and rewatch them. <laughs> All right. So, so the root chakra, the cornerstone of your spiritual journey, because it is the root you know, the energy of the root chakra is vital because this energy anchors, is the anchor for connecting your uh, non-physical and physical bodies together, energies together. You know, um, the chakras are like anchor points. You know, the, the, the physical, like we talked about in the last lesson, the physical body and the soul is connected together through the chakras, through the seven major chakras, all of the minor chakras as well, but primarily the foundation is through all of the chakras and the foundation of all of those chakras is the root chakra, you know, the root, the base, you know what I mean? No pl flower, plant, or tree can exist without the root. You can cut out any other part of a, a, a ve vegetation of any kind, a plant, a, a tree, a flower, you can completely cut off the whole entire thing. You can cut a tree completely down all the way to the to the ground. And as long as you don't mess with the roots, it will grow back. You know what I mean? But you can leave a tree standing up and take out just the roots. And it's only a matter of time before that tree crumbles and dies and never, never to exist again. You know, and so the root chakra is called such because it is the energy center that is the spiritual foundation of your energy, of your physical energy and your non-physical energy coming together, you know, so your etheric energy. So the root chakra, working with the root chakra sets the foundation for your spiritual journey. I mean, we have to work with the root chakra. The root chakra is all about physical energy. You know I mean? So we have to, we have to honor being in the physical in order to, you know, like we talk, let me stop for a second. <laughs> in in you know spiritual metaphysical communities and arenas, um, especially nowadays, a lot of the things people talk about are non-physical things, non-physical capabilities. You know, intuition, clairvoyance, uh, astral projection, lucid dreaming, 
you know, all of these things that are complete are beyond the physical, metaphysics itself, you know, beyond what's beyond the physical, you know, manifestation, quantum jumping, you know, all of these things, twin flames and all of this stuff, you know, people are focused on very non-physical things. But we have to remember, we chose to come into these physical bodies because it is through the physical that we can achieve this greatness with those powerful abilities. You know, it's it's about bringing those abilities into the physical. I mean, otherwise we would have just stayed souls in, in the fourth dimension where, you know, because all, all of those things that were mentioned are all rooted in the fourth dimension you know, and the subconscious mind or superconscious mind you know, in, the, in the fifth dimension. Nothing about it is in the third dimension. So it's all about bringing the access of those abilities here in the physical. So that's why working with the root chakra sets the foundation for your spiritual journey. As the first chakra of the seven main chakras, its balance and alignment are essential for the rest of the chakras to function optimally. It is essential. So you have to have a strong base, <laughs> like, like with the tree. The tree, the root is essential. <laughs> you can you can you can survive without the limb. You cut off this limb, okay, it's it, the tree will still grow. You you top it off and take all the tops off, the tree will still grow. I mean, you, any of us, any how many of us as, as kids plucked those little dandelions and blew the seeds everywhere? I mean, we've all done that, and 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 it was no problem, no issue because there were it would it would grow right back. <laughs> It would grow right back. So, you know, if you uprooted that, eh, that wasn't growing. The new seed might grow, but that same one ain't growing back. <laughs> so, uh, oh, let me see here. My higher chakras opened first. That was easy. The lower chakras were the hard ones, but totally worth it. That's when I started taking off. Beautiful, beautiful, Perla. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Every time I click on this to read it, all that goes away. <laughs> I got to check back on it every now and then. Okay, so let's start over. Working with the root chakra sets the foundation for spiritual for your spiritual journey. As the first chakra of the seven main chakras, its balance and alignment are essential for the rest of the chakras to function optimally. You know I mean? Your chakras are always functioning, but but it's how well are they functioning? Are they just barely crawling, like trying to get through sludge? Or are they whew, moving like a swift breeze? You know what I mean? Or are they overworked you know what I mean? and exhausted? But it's optimally. It grounds us in our physical bodies and the material world, which forms the basis for higher spiritual exploration. The more secure and grounded you are in your root chakra, the safer it is to explore and open the higher chakras without becoming ungrounded. I mean, that's why the root chakra is so is so vital. I mean, because you have to have this base. I mean, like if you go to like any kind of spiritual convention, a lot of the people who are like psychic readers and things, they they large. I mean, big. <laughs> because they they don't know how to stay grounded. And so in order to ground themselves after doing some sort of spiritual work, connecting with the ancestors or doing whatever they're doing. Uh, psychic readings into your in, intuitive subconscious mind and things for you. You know, they don't only know how to ground themselves through eating. <laughs> and I, I remember, I remember one of the first times I ever went to a like spiritual convention like that, I looked around, I'm like, all these people out here giving readings, man, and, and they like 400 pounds. <laughs> but through, through more work, I understood, you know, what, what was going on there. But anyways, you know, not to judge anybody or anything, but just kind of giving you insight into how you can bypass that as you go deeper into your own spiritual work, into the inner levels of things and the inner workings and, and kind of bring to fruition into the forefront these intuitive abilities, how you can make sure that you are grounding yourself because it's all done through the physical. I mean, like it's, it's all about bringing this non-physical awareness into the physical. So that's why the root chakra is important. You have to honor the physical. We have to honor our physical bodies. You know, not look for an escape. None of this is none of this is about looking for escape. You know, what I mean, lucid dreaming is not about escaping the physical. You know, oh, I can do so much in my lucid dreams. 
in, in my non-physical life that I can't do in the physical. Yeah, that's cool and that's great, but it's not meant to escape the physical and want me want to be in the, you know what I mean? Because otherwise you're going to spend your whole life sleeping. You know what I mean? Because you want to lose a dream all the time, you know? So not to say not to have that as an aspiration, but understand your purpose for these things, you know? Because all of those things that I mentioned, those are just surface level. You know, there's so many more abilities and uh, experiences to be had much deeper than these, uh, you know, intuitive subconscious abilities. So the uh, the book of Revelations, you know, the, the chakras are in nearly every holy scripture, but the book of Revelations is one specific to um, talking about a lot of different things, including the chakras. So in chapter two, uh, in, in the book of Revelation, the uh, seven, hold on, wait, you know what? I should have pulled up. I wonder if it's in, let me see. Okay, hold on one second. Okay, can you all see this? The structure of the mind? Diagram? How do you how do you balance your root chakra? We're gonna get into that. We're gonna get into that. But uh can everybody see the structure of the mind on here? No? Okay. Okay, now everybody can see the structure of the mind. Okay, yeah, so how to balance the root chakra, we're gonna get into that, okay? If, if by the end of it, it's not clear, then uh, ask, ask again. Okay, so in the book of Revelation, the seven churches represent the seven levels of the mind. And the seven candlesticks mentioned in the book of Revelation represent the seven chakras, which correlate with each of the seven levels of the mind. I mean, like we talked about earlier in the last lesson, the physical is the root chakra. The sacral chakra is with the emotional level. The solar plexus chakra with the lower astral. The heart chakra with the upper astral. The throat chakra with the mental level. The brow chakra with the causal level. And the, and the crown chakra with the cosmic consciousness level and so oh yeah and then and then the the doorway or the seven seals in the book of revelation represent the seven doorways in moving from one of these into the next level with the seventh doorway moving from cosmic consciousness into the i am consciousness your true self your real self and so the first part of the book of Revelations is all about balancing these uh, chakras, what will happen when you balance them and what will happen when they are not balanced. So let's go back to where we were. Okay, so it all starts in chapter two, verse one. Okay, to the angel, let me put this over here. To the angel of the church of Ephesus, write these things, says the omnipotent one, who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I'm going to read that again. To the angel of the church of Ephesus, write these things, says the omnipotent one, who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. So this is the first church it's talking about, so the, phys the physical level. You know I mean, it's the physical level as the first, the seven candlesticks. So it's first introducing the seven chakras. Okay. Cause like, the, cause the root chakra is the foundation. So we're looking at this Holy scripture because like we learned in, excuse me, like we learned in the dream interpretation masterclass, the universal language of the mind that we use to interpret dreams is also used to decode Holy scriptures. So we, in that course, we started with the very first book of the Bible, the book of Genesis, the very first 10 verses. 
And now we're in the very last book and looking at and looking at things. So an angel in the universal language of the mind represents a messenger from the real self, right? So an angel will represent, oh wait, you know, I forgot you guys can't see my thing. An angel will represent thoughts coming up and down from the real self, down into the physical, from the superconscious mind, superconscious thoughts coming down into the physical. You know I mean, the thoughts of the higher thoughts coming down into your conscious mind. So to be able to even receive those, we have to create space within our mind. That's where, that's why concentration is so key because the stronger we can form our, our level of concentration, our ability to hold our attention, the easier it is to still our mind and create space within the conscious mind. You know what I mean? Create space within the conscious mind to receive the intuitive thoughts of the subconscious mind. You know I mean, to receive the transcendent thoughts of the super, super conscious mind and to receive the knowledge and wisdom thoughts of the I am, the real self, the all-knowing thoughts of the real self. Okay. There we go. So that's what an angel represents. The messenger, messenger, bringing these thoughts, the, the, the bringer of bringing these thoughts down into the physical conscious mind. Ephesus is the seventh level of physical. The omnipotent one is your I am, your real self. I mean, anytime it talks about God um, and, and things like that, it's talking about the I am. But I was going to get into more of that, but th that would be safe for like all the rest of the books of the Bible. <laughs> We'll just stick with this for, for tonight. Otherwise, we'll get really deep into things. I don't want to confuse you just yet. Well, not confuse you just yet at all, but uh, I don't want to put that, add, add something onto it before we layer a foundation. So seven stars, stars in the universal language of the mind represent conscious awareness, awareness in the conscious mind, right? So stars provide light, right? There's three sources of light that we have out in the out in space, right? And and you know, outer space in the universal language of the mind represents your inner space. <laughs> outer space represents all of this inner space. And so light represents awareness. You have stars, the moon, which provide more light than stars do. And the sun, which produces even more light than uh, the, uh, the the moon does or the stars. So stars will represent awareness in the conscious mind. The moon will represent subconscious awareness. And the sun will represent superconscious awareness. So the number seven represents the seven the seven levels of the mind. So that's why, I, like I was saying, the root chakra is the foundation for all the other chakras. And so this, these seven stars are representing having conscious awareness, being consciously aware in the conscious mind of these seven levels of the mind. The omnipotent one is the one who holds these seven stars. An individual who knows their real self and their true self has conscious awareness of these seven levels. That's what it's saying here. Because in order for you, you know, in order for you to know yourself, your true self, yourself as an I am, in, in order to know your true essence and consciousness, you have to be aware of the emotional level. You have to be uh, have awareness of the lower astral, the upper astral, the mental level, the causal level, cosmic consciousness. You have to have awareness of all of these things. That's why Jesus said, I am the way, because I am one who is aware of all of these things. 
living from cosmic consciousness, also known as Christ consciousness or Buddha consciousness. Repeat, I am that I am. So it, the omnipotent one is an individual who is aware of, of all of these things. They are consciously aware of it. You know, I have to go back to it and watch this on replay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Watch it as many times as you can. Break it down. So, oops. all right. And the right hand, the right hand represents fulfilling your purpose. We're going to get into the word fulfillment, fulfilling your purpose. So not only are you aware of all of these levels of mind, which means that you're aware of the subconscious and superconscious mind, which means that you're aware of yourself in a physical body, a soul, and a spirit, but you're using that awareness to fulfill your purpose. So that's what it's, that's what it's talking about here. That's what is at the foundation. That is what is at the base. Everything else branches off of this. Just like, just like the root of a plant, everything else branches off of that. Everything going on within your job, within the family you grew up with, within the family you created, within the friendships that you've had, within the experiences that you have, with, with just driving down the road, brushing your teeth, <laughs> going to a funeral, a past loved one. All of these things are branching off of the foundation of being at the core of fulfilling your purpose is knowing who you truly are on all levels and being aware of that because that's what all of this experience is. That's what it's for. That's what having experiences in the fifth dimension is for as a spirit. Having experiences in the fourth dimension is for as a soul. Having experiences in the third dimension is for as a, as a human, physical human being in this physical body. That's what the true underlying purpose at the deepest root is all about. That's why I said working with the root chakra is the foundation of your spiritual journey. Okay, chapter two, verse two. It says, I know your works and your labor and your patience and how you cannot endure those who are ungodly. You have tried those who say they are apostles and are not, and you have found them liars. I'm going to read this again. Remember, just like when we interpret dreams, every person, place, or thing in the dream is about who? You, the person dreaming. It's not about nobody else. So same with these holy scriptures. When these holy scriptures are talking about other people and all this, you know, the 144,000 people talking about the 144,000, that's just talking about the 144 di different possible aspects that we each have. There are 144 different characteristics that a human can portray. And every single one of those 144 is a character within the Bible. You know what I mean? I talk about the Bible a lot because there is a lot of embedded symbology with it. All the same information and knowledge you can get in all these other holy scriptures. It's just not as um, encoded. It's just not as um, as hidden. You mean through imagery? It's more direct because of the time period when when it was written. You know what I mean the Dhammapada, the Tao Te Ching, uh, were were all written. The Yogi Sutras of Patanjali were all written like 500 years before Jesus. You know, it was written at a whole different time, and in in a region where you could speak of these things uh, without any fear of repercussion. You know, so in at this time, you know, they had to really hide it and things. And also they did it in a way because not only at that time did it need to be hidden, but the times moving forward. You know what I mean? So that it so that this knowledge and information, no matter what happens in all these other regions and their knowledge that they're trying to preserve, this knowledge is going to make it through the darkest times of humanity, you know, what I mean, through the, the the dark ages or the Kali Yuga, you know, what I mean, to where this our solar system is at the furthest point away from the center of the galaxy. So there's the least amount of energy on our planet that will ever be. And then now we're already on the other side of that and coming out of it. So they wrote this in a way to where this scripture will survive through those, you know, those thousands of years to where now we can still un uh, decode that ancient knowledge. So anyway, so remember, let's reread this and remember that 
when it's talking about other people, you know, and things, it's talking about as different aspects within you. I mean, because these are messages from our higher self. I mean, this is the angel talking. So the thoughts from the real self coming down to the conscious mind and saying, I know your works and your labor. Because the power of the super conscious mind is what? Awareness. Awareness. <laughs> it knows. Your spirit knows. <laughs> your subconscious mind knows. I know your works and your labor. <laughs> the effort you put in. I know your actions and the effort that you put in. And your patience and how you cannot endure those who are ungodly. You have tried those who say they are apostles and are not. And you have found them liars. So you must invest in yourself. OK, it's going to take work to cultivate spiritual growth and development. One who practices concentration will be able to examine the thoughts of the conscious mind and determine which are productive and which are destructive. That's what this is talking about here. Using your attention to examine what thoughts are producing something and what thoughts are actually producing something. You know what I mean, what thoughts are beneficial? And what thoughts are detrimental? You know what I mean, what ways, what actions are lifting you up and pushing your life forward? And what actions and choices are actually holding you back? What perspectives are allowing you to grow and see things clearly? And what perspectives are steering you in the wrong direction? What guidance from within are you listening to is truly from the soul and the spirit, intuitive information from the subconscious mind and, and the superconscious mind? And what guidance are you listening to and moving through that's coming from the ego? You know what I mean? So endure those who are ungodly. You, you cannot endure. I know your works and your labor and your patience and how you cannot endure those who are ungodly, meaning the, the parts of yourself that are not in alignment with you knowing your true self. The th you know, any, any kind of thought that something outside of yourself is creating your reality. <laughs> any kind of thought that is tearing yourself down. Any kind of thought that is not believing in yourself and your power and your ability to persevere, whatever it is you're going through. You know what I mean? Any kind of thought of lack, of worry, of doubt, of fear, of sadness, of grief. It's okay for it to be there, but how much attention are you going to give to it? And how much attention are you going to give to it in comparison to what you're giving your attention to outside of that? And then what kind of attention are you giving to it? Are you giving it power or are you just observing and, and monitoring and acknowledging that it exists and that it's there and then identifying why it's there and how you can benefit from it being there? The quality of attention you give it. Okay, so verse three. Okay, hold on, I gotta close out some of these things so I can read this. <laughs> All right. So verse three says, and you have patience and have borne burdens for my name's sake and have not wearied. And you have and you have patience and have borne burdens for my name's sake and have not wearied. So the etymology of the word burden equals duty. A lot of people hear burden and have a negative connotation of it. Oh, it's such a burden. I mean, oh, I'm burdened by this. You know what I mean? That's because a lot of people use it in a connotation because they're afraid of the, the true things that they have to do, what their duty is, what their job is. Uh, the word job even has a negative connotation. Man, eh, it's a job. <laughs> oh, it ain't a job if you love doing it. <laughs> they say that. But if you love, it's still a job. It's still your duty. And your primary duty, like I said, is to know yourself, who you are. You cannot know, you cannot truly know anything only to the degree of which you know yourself. And so the etymology of the word burden means duty. So the root chakra is also the energy of your ego. Okay, so getting that started. So root chakra is also the energy of your ego. The one who has cultivated these spiritual disciplines has aligned their identity with that of the true self. 
So I'm, I'm laying out here for you that the root chakra is also the energy of the ego because if, like we talked about in the last lesson, so some of you may have missed it, like we talked about in the last lesson, gravity is is pulling things down through mag through mag gravity is really just magnetics but through through gravity your energy is being pulled down naturally so it is natural that our energies are more focused in our baser lower chakras and that's why so many people are ruled by their ego because naturally more energy is is there and they have no con conscious control over their energy and over the, how their mind's programmed. So when those egoic you know, influences come in, it takes control and, and motivates them and where the ego wants you to go. But in, in chapter or verse three, it talks about, and you have patience and have borne burdens for my name's sake, and you have not wearied, you have not faltered away. <laughs> So the true, the true balance of your root chakra is to make sure that your focus is on my namesake. I mean, you have borne burdens for my namesake. You hold the duty, your duty as identifying and knowing yourself as an I am of your consciousness, not knowing your physical body, not knowing your soul, not even knowing your spirit. It's, it's not about it's not about knowing the conscious mind and knowing the subconscious mind and, and all these intuitive abilities. It's not about knowing the super conscious mind and having cosmic consciousness. You know what I mean Christ consciousness, Buddha consciousness. You know what I mean? Oh, I'm fully enlightened. You know how many fully enlightened people still come back to this planet and reincarnate into bodies? Tons. Okay. So so becoming fully enlightened don't mean you just escaping from this physical reality never to come back. I mean, I'm not saying fully enlightened people have to come back, but there's a choice. You know what I mean? But it's still, it's still, it's not about, it's not about attaining cosmic consciousness. It's about going beyond that, knowing your true self, your I am. Who am I? I am. I am. Oh, I didn't know there was a clear all drawing. So I think I might use that in the future. <laughs> okay. So this individual, their willpower is very strong. And their willpower is very strong because does anybody remember what strengthens your willpower? I actually made a video on this just the other day. Yesterday, I think. What strengthens your willpower? Throw it in, throw it in the chat or... or unmute yourself and, and speak up it might be the wrong answer but it's okay what's so it you can you hear yeah yep all right it's your desire your desire is what strengthens your willpower what what strength is your desire your purpose how purpose. you will personally benefit from this um exactly. goal exactly so what what did it talk about earlier they talked about in the very beginning, you know what I mean? The right hand, the omnipotent one, the one who knows themselves has the has fulfilled the purpose. <laughs> and so, how do you get there? Okay, I know you're. I know you're a person who's kind of looked at what what you know is starting to examine your thoughts in the conscious mind. You know, that's kind of where a lot of us are right now. We've been we've been practicing concentration every day. You know what I mean? Or as close to every day as we can get. Maybe it's only once a week even. Who, who cares? I mean, it's more than what it was before. That's all that matters. You know? And so we've, we've become better at examining the thoughts that come into our mind and our conscious mind and identifying the ones that we should leave and the ones, the negative thoughts we need to get rid of. Right? And, and we understand, we have charged ourselves with the duty of knowing ourselves in a much deeper way beyond just this physical body. You know what I mean? And so because I understand that as my purpose and I have charged myself with this job, I will have a lot, e it's a lot easier to overcome the different things that come up in life, the different obstacles that come up. A person who has this perspective is going to have a much stronger willpower you know what I mean? because their, their purpose is a lot deeper than just, you know, oh, I want to I wanna be successful. 
<laughs> you know I mean? Their purpose goes far beyond that. Their purpose goes far beyond just this lifetime. You know what I mean? So, verse 4 then says, Nevertheless, I have something against you because you have left your first love. Nevertheless, I have something against you because you have left your first love. Your first love is your soul. Your soul is your soulmate. You've heard me say that a thousand times. I have something against you because you have left your first love. You, know I mean? you have become unaware of your soul. You know I mean, after about six, seven, eight years, we completely forget that we're souls and we're so engrossed in this physical body, in this physical reality especially here in America, you know, because of how we're programmed and the, and the perspective of life that we're given and fed and programmed to believe. We buy into it. We fully believe it. And thus we completely forget. You know, but that's all societies, really, because that's just how human, human consciousness developed. And so your first love is your soul. So the manifest, it says manifesting power of the root chakra is to be used to unify the conscious and subconscious minds in order to align with the superconscious mind of the spirit, not just to man manifest a wonderful life and amazing experiences. I mean, your soul is your other half. I mean, this this right here, like we learned in the uh, in the first ten books of the Genesis, the firmament is right here. The separation of the waters above and the waters below. The experiences above. The superconscious mind is whole amongst itself. And below, you have two halves of the whole. That's why this solid line is outside, is inside. Because this down here is, this is one half, and this is all of, oh, where are we at? All of this is one half up here. This is one half, and down here is one half. You know I mean, your better half, you know what I mean, your other half is your soul. The stronger connection and relationship that you can have with yourself, with your soul, the more beneficial and stronger the relationships you can have with any other any other person outside of yourself. Verse 5 says, remember, therefore, from whence you have fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come to you very soon, and I will remove your candlestick from its place unless you repent. Right? So your consciousness is your true essence, your real self, your I am, right? It is merely using the vehicles of the spirit, soul, and body in order to experience. That's what I say, I say all the time. These are just vehicles. In order for us to experience, I mean, water represents life experience, right? Then what we're talking about in the uh, Dream Interpretation Masterclass, in the books of the Bible, the, the waters above and the waters below. I just said it just now. Water represents experience. The the spirit, our, our I am is using our spirit to be able to experience the fifth dimension. It's using the soul to be, ex be able to experience the four inner levels of the fourth dimension. And it's using the physical body to experience the physical level of the third dimension. All of these, the, the mind is just a tool for, a, for our consciousness to use to experience. You are not your conscious mind. You're not your subconscious mind. You're not your superconscious mind. You're not your spirit, soul, or body. You're not any of these things. You're not your thoughts. You're not your emotions. You're not your actions. You are your consciousness. Anything that can, the, the spirit can be observed. The soul can be observed. The body can be observed. Your actions can be observed. The conscious mind can be observed. The subconscious mind can be observed. The superconscious mind can be observed. Your actions in the physical can be observed. The ego can be observed. Your emotions can be observed. You can perceive your emotions. You can watch them move. It. You can perceive your thoughts. You can, you can see them moving through your mind. Your consciousness is the observer. It is the one observing. Is your directing intelligence. 
You can't observe your consciousness because you are your consciousness. So it says, nevertheless, I have something against. Oh, wait. Remember where, therefore, from whence you have fallen. Remember, you are your I am, but you have fallen all the way down into the physical. I mean, you're all the way down here. But remember from where you have come. That's what you're here to do is to remember. Remember, be reminded from where you have come. And repent, repent, repent. A lot of people think like repent just means like, like with repent, it comes with sin. And sin is just merely doing something that goes against your purpose, your blueprint. So repenting is identifying okay i've kind of missed took a misstep i'm going to refocus myself you know what i mean remember from whence you have fallen but repent okay don't worry about it okay you you yeah from from early childhood until recently or until now or until you know 10 20 years ago you were just confused on who you truly were you didn't know who you were but now that you do you know what i mean Realign yourself, get back aligned with your purpose and do the first works, your primary goal, your primary purpose. Like I said earlier, it's the root. It's, it's, it comes before everything. You know what I mean? Knowing yourself, the experiences that you have and the understandings that you build are the only thing that you take with you after this life. The only thing you take with you after this life. The money you accumulate, you can't take with you. I mean, the, ex the, the experiences themselves, you can't take with you. you know what I mean, the success you attain, you can't take with you. The understandings you build of yourself, the knowledge and awareness of who you truly are, that you progress into, that is what you take with you. That is the first work. Yeah, you have second works and third works and other things, other duties, but your primary duty, your first work, or else I will come to you very soon and I will remove your candlestick from its place unless you repent. So meaning, if, if you ain't doing this, then there ain't no purpose in, in working with your root chakra. You know I mean? it's, it's going to be controlled by the ego. So you won't, you won't have control of it no more. It'll be removed from your possession because it won't be under your control. So your consciousness, your true essence, your real self, the I am. It is merely using the vehicle of the spirit, soul, and the body in order to experience. And it uses the tool of the mind, conscious, subconscious, superconscious, to determine what is experienced. The first works are remembering your primary purpose for choosing this life. So why did you choose into this life? You know what I mean, like we talked about in, uh, I don't even remember which one it was in. If it was in earlier coursework for this. But I talked about um, giving, I gave you an exercise of writing down the conditions of your birth in full. Write down all the conditions of your birth, everything that you, I actually did it in a live too the other day, but it, I primarily first before then gave it to you all as, as uh, in, in this course, I believe earlier in this course, one of the earlier lessons. Write down all the conditions of your birth. Why would your soul have chosen to be born into this life? What is the purpose? So verse six, I'll move everything to this side now. Oops. I can see. But you have in your favor. Oh, wait, but but this you have in your favor. You hate the works of the Nicolatine, Nicolatanes. Nicolate, uh, anyways the Knicks, <laughs> the New York Knicks, <laughs> which I also hate. But this you have in your favor. You hate the works of the Nicolatanes, which I also hate. So that's the parts of yourself that are unproductive. You mean the, the Nicolatanes didn't really have much going for them in the, in the, in the, in the biblical times. You know I mean, they held no positions of power. They didn't really produce 
Um, you know, it's not like they were a community of carpenters or a community of uh, wheat producers. You know what I mean? They was just like existing. You know what I mean? So the parts of yourself that are unproductive. So this you have, this, but this you have in your favor. You hate the works of the Nick. So like all of us, all of us can identify ways in which we're unproductive. You know what I mean? Maybe we don't eat right. Maybe we don't make the right choices all the time. Maybe we uh, smoke. Maybe we drink. Maybe we beat ourselves up over mistakes that we make. Um, maybe we, you know, overreact and yell at other people in our lives. Um, you know, maybe we, um, you know, push people away. Maybe we, uh, you know, uh, shy away from challenges and don't try to, you know, push ourselves because we're uh, out of fear that we won't be successful or something, you know, whatever it is, you know. <laughs> that is unproductive for the most part most of us who are aware that we do these things we might not like it. yeah we don't like it you know what i mean i don't i don't like that i'm so introverted i don't have no social life i mean i don't like that i i i drink all the time i mean i don't i don't like that whenever i make a mistake i just start beating myself up about it you know what i mean I don't, I don't like that I push everybody away and, and I'm so closed off to allowing others to love me that I can't have a deep, I don't like it, but that's how I am. So it's saying that no matter where you're at, even you have this going for you, <laughs> but this you have in your favor. You hate the works of these parts. You, 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 don't like, you don't like that you do this, which I also don't like that you do this. You know what I mean? So then we'll move on. Let me read this. It is a constant choice to remain on the righteous path of self-awareness, soul growth, and spiritual development. Just because you make the choice once and become disciplined does not mean that it is always the case. You must continually make the choice to remain so or make the choice to go back to it if you have become distracted. So, you know, even, even if we're, no matter how, kind of how much we've progressed, we still have to remain focused on where we're wanting to go. I mean, because it's very easily easy to become undisciplined again. You know what I mean? We've all heard through all these Zooms all the time of us talking about, you know, man, I was, I was, you know, or in the mentee or in the Discord chat, I was doing this exercise for six weeks straight and then fell off. I was doing this exercise for two weeks straight and then fell off. I was doing this exercise for eight months and then fell off. You know what I mean? I was, I was super disciplined for four years straight, like doing four hours of exercise every single day what I got up to for the last year, year and a half. You know what I mean? And then I fell off. You know I mean? And so, and, but then got back on. You know I mean? And so you once you make this choice, it's a continual choice. Just like with everything in life. You know what I mean? Like, like if you've ever, if you've ever like tried to change your diet or try to start working out, you know what I mean? Like, like, the gym on January 1st is the most the time when most people are there, right? Because everybody's making a New Year's resolution. Okay, on Jan starting on January, everything a clean slate. No matter what I did last year, I'm I'm going to the gym. I'm getting in shape this year. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so everybody's at the gym. They've all made a choice to put themselves on this path and walk down this path. But every single day, there's not a single day that has more people than the day before from January 1st to February 1st <laughs> because only so many people continue to make that choice to where by March 1st, it's, it's, it's slim pickings. I mean, you can go back to the gym and it was just like it was in December. <laughs> you know, And so just like with everything in life, not only do you need to make that choice, you need to continue with like, like willpower, like you're talking about, what is willpower? Making a conscious choice and then following through with that choice with unceasing determined action until the ideal is achieved. So that means you have to continue to make that choice. You have to continue to make that choice. That's why what fuels willpower is desire, what fuels desire is purpose. If you need to continue to remind yourself how you're going to personally benefit from this because it's a regular choice that you need to make all the time if you're gonna make it to the end. And if somebody's trying to climb a mountain, and they forget why they're even climbing up there. They ain't going to keep going. They're only halfway up like, man, why am I even doing this? I don't remember. I'm going back down. Because that's way easier than going up. 
And so you have to continue to make, it's a continual choice. So verse seven says, he who has ears, let him hear what the spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of my God. <laughs> Let's read that again. He who has ears, let him hear what the spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of my God. Ears are receptive. You know I mean, it's all about receptivity, listening to the to the real self, to the true self. You know I mean, also, this is the etheric image of the root chakra, the four petals. You ain't, you ain't gonna see that in no chakra book. <laughs> well, actually, you will in uh by C. W. Lead Beater. Chakras by C. W. Lead Beater. You'll find it there. When you go to Barnes and Noble, they got probably 20 chakra books. You don't see this in it. <laughs> you don't see this in it. You see, you see something else. Which which has purpose and things. But there's a reason they don't show you the vortex of what it really looks like. You know what I mean, this is just a two-dimensional image. It's 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 multi-dimensional. Anyways, um, uh, we get back to receptivity, listening to the I am. It all begins with listening. What, what came? The angel, the messenger. We are listening. We're reading this scripture and decoding it. So we're, we're at least listening to something. <laughs> but you also have to learn how to listen within. So that's why concentration is so key to be able to still the conscious mind and to create space to receive the intuitive thoughts of the subconscious mind, to receive the transcendent thoughts of the superconscious mind to the, receive the awareness of the I am. The tree of life is the medulla oblongata. The medulla oblongata, the paradise of God is the strength and pituitary and pineal gland. Okay. So it says, he who has ears, let him hear what the spirit says to the churches. To he who has ears, to the one who makes himself receptive, let him hear what the spirit says to the churches, to him who overcomes. Remember I said, it's like, it's like you have to have a, what was the last, very the very last verse was talking about what? Making a choice and continuing with that choice. Continuing to follow through with that. And you have, it's in order to overcome the obstacles. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of the God. The tree of life is the medulla oblongata. The medulla oblongata, the purpose of the, I think we talked about it earlier, it directs the life force energy. We talked about it in uh, the first lesson. The medulla oblongata, we receive life force energy in, and then the medulla oblongata is like the radio controller directing the life force energy out to the rest of the body. That's why the medulla oblongata is one of the only places on the physical body that, can, that surgeons cannot operate on because it's so interconnected to every part of your body. Because its purpose is to take the life force energy that you receive and disperse it throughout the whole rest of the body. I mean, if you want energy to flow into a certain part of your body, you have to use your medulla oblongata to direct it there, to direct the flow of energy, send the energy there. So when you work with the energy of the root chakra and direct the energy of your physical life to being open and receptive to the direction of the subconscious and superconscious, you will be able to harness the power and direction of your life force energy towards fulfilling your highest purpose. That's what this is saying. This is talking about an individual who does these things Someone who listens to these last few verses, you know, who hears what the Spirit says to the churches, you know, verse, verse, just said, the angel of the church of Ephesus writes these things, says the omnipotent one. So everything that was said from here to here is said from the church to the churches. 
Well, if you will listen to what's being said to the churches, then you're going to be someone who, who has a strengthened pituitary gland, which is associated with the brow chakra, mental perception, and strengthened pineal gland, which is associated with the crown chakra, spiritual awareness. <laughs> so you're going to be someone who, who what's, what's food? Eating. Knowledge. Who has, who has the knowledge of the mental perception, intuition, and spiritual awareness. Anyone have any thoughts or questions so far on these first seven verses? We won't get into the next ones and in the next lesson about the sacral chakra. Okay. So again, the energy of the root chakra is vital. It is vital. This energy is, center is your spiritual foundation, your anchor. Okay. As mentioned previously, the energy of the root chakra is all about physical manifestation. It's all about the physical energy, the energy you use to manifest in this physical reality. And if you're one who listens to those, those verses and holds those commands, identifying what thoughts in your physical, in your conscious mind are productive and what ones aren't productive, and you also hate those unproductive thoughts, then and you remove your, okay, I remove this from my life and I'm giving more attention to here because energy flows where my attention goes. So I'm removing my attention from those thoughts and placing them over here to these thoughts. Then you're going to be one who has the tree of life and the paradise of the God. You're going to be one who can use the mental perception to command the medulla oblongata how to utilize your physical energy. The medulla oblongata is in control of your physical energy. The root chakra is all about physical energy. So, as mentioned previously, the energy of the root chakra is all about physical manifestation. After you have an idea, look for the purpose of that idea then bring about the action necessary for the fulfillment of that idea. Man, I missed a lot of letters on here, but the message is still clear. <laughs> even though this is on here, even though you're going to have the recording, even though I'm going to put the PDF with it, I want everybody to write this down. Find you a piece of paper, find you a napkin, <laughs> find whatever you need and write this down. After you have an idea, look for the purpose of that idea. How will I personally benefit from this idea? And then understand that the highest form of benefit are the understandings that you will build through the experiences that you will have in manifesting it. In that coming to fruition, what experiences will you have and what le life lessons will you learn along the way? What understandings will you build along the way? That's your highest form of benefit. So after you have an idea, look for the purpose of that idea. Then bring about the action necessary for the fulfillment of that idea. I mean, that was talked about earlier, wasn't it? Fulfilling your purpose. Fulfillment. What is fulfillment? Fulfillment. Fulfillment. What's the suffix meant mean? Mind. So fulfillment means you need to fill your mind full of the image thoughts of your desired manifestations. That's using the root chakra energy. That's balancing the root chakra energy. Because the root chakra is associated to what? The conscious mind here on the physical level. This is root chakra energy. Balance, balance what you put into your body. Balance the thoughts of the conscious mind. 
balance your actions in the physical reality. And you will have a balanced energy within the root chakra. Remove your attention from the thoughts that are unproductive. Place more attention onto the thoughts that are productive in alignment with what you want and desire. <laughs> after you have after you have an idea, look for the purpose of that idea, then bring about the action necessary for the fulfillment of that idea. Fulfillment. You need to fill your mind full of the image thoughts of your desired manifestations. Full. Full doesn't mean 80%, 90%, to fulfillment. So any thought that does not align with your goal and your desire is a distraction. And so this is why we've been practicing the candle concentration exercise. If you're someone who's practiced that for just 90 days, then that means that you have most likely practiced thousands of times removing your attention from the distraction, whether there, whether it was a thought, a sound, a feeling, something in the corner of your eye, <laughs> no matter what it was that was a distraction, you practice, you've practiced thousands of times removing your attention from that and placing your attention on the candle. No matter how good you are at it, you know what I mean, or how good you've gotten at it, you're going to be better than when you first started if you've done it for 90 days straight at minimum. You know, that's that's little. Like the candle exercise, I was doing the candle exercise for at least two and a half years before I moved on to a different concentration exercise. <laughs> I'm, I'm talking, I'm talking, didn't miss a single day. You know what I mean? I would never ask y'all to do something I ain't done. Didn't miss a single day. And that's no exaggeration. I'm telling you, you do that for 90 days, you will have practiced thousands of times of removing your attention from whatever was distracting you and placing your attention on what you do want. Same, that's, that's where this fulfillment is going to come in. Any thought, any thought, any feeling, any emotion that has anything to do with the opposite, or really that has nothing to do with what you are actually wanting to desire is, you know, any doubt. If you doubt yourself, that is not in alignment with your fulfilled desire. If you don't believe in yourself, if you if you think of anything in lack, uh, uh, anything, any thought that is not in alignment with what you want is a distraction. And so we have to take our concentrated practice to remove our attention from that distraction and place more attention into what we do want. So how do you do that? You know what I mean? I mean, I, I, I will burn that image up in my mind. I'll set that image on fire and burn it up. Like if you have a small piece of paper and just burn it up and it dissipates, then I take the ashes of that to formulate a new image in my mind. We talk about it in the visualization course. We talk about how to do that. And so that's fulfillment. Filling your mind completely with the image thought of what you desire. So, the three necessary ingredients for manifestation are concentrating on a visualized thought with will for manifestation. I want everybody to write this down too. The three necessary ingredients for manifestation are concentrating on a visualized thought with will for manifestation. Attention goes where the or at, attention grows where the attention goes. Exactly. Energy flows where the attention goes. Every, what you put your attention on grows. That's a way of like combining both of those into one. Nice. Nice. So for so for the mentees who have been here for a while, what do you think this is describing? The three necessary ingredients for manifestation are concentrating on a visualized thought with will for manifestation. Concentration, visualization, and will. What are the three of those?
They are the three keys to reasoning. The three keys to reasoning. Reasoning is the power of the conscious mind, right? We talked about that in the uh, in the um, dream interpretation masterclass and in the visualization course. Three keys to the reasoning is the power of the conscious mind. And the three keys of reasoning are concentration or uh, attention, imagination, and well, and memory, not will. But through that, will will is will will is an energy of of the root chakra as well. So concentration, attention, and so I might have thrown you off with the question, but essentially what this is meaning, what this is saying here is utilizing the reasoning power of the conscious mind, which is here in the physical. So it's all about the root chakra. The three necessary ingredients for manifestation are concentration, your ability to control your attention on a visualized thought, your ability to control the, the images that your imagination creates with will, your directing intelligence for manifestation. And then next week, well, not next week, but next lesson, we'll get into the sacral chakra. Hopefully it won't take two months. <laughs> Let me put that together for y'all. Actually, I know it will. It will not because I will manifest it sooner than that. All right. Who? Anybody have any questions? All right. Excellent. Excellent. Any other thoughts or anything that y'all want to share for the Zoom tonight? Any other questions or dreams? Oh, you're on mute. I can't hear you. Oh, if, I didn't know if you were talking, my bad. <laughs> well, is, is there anyone? I do got something real quick. I yeah, just yeah, thought of um, that uh, no matter what I do, I cannot leave my journey. Like, no matter what I do, I can't derail. Um, everything that I experience, it, it is a part of my journey. It is a part of my development. Nothing I experience is not a part of it. And so there's no such thing as me derailing or getting off of my path because my path itself is life and I cannot escape it or get rid of it because that is the one singular thing that I believe I'm stuck with for eternity is life. And so that's why I cannot escape or derail from my path. I can only halt it or accelerate it. And so I'm going to choose to accelerate it. And not necessarily halt it, but reroute it. You know I mean? Like, yeah, like if, if you wanted to go, like you in Washington, right? And say you want to go mm -hmm. to Washington. Well, yeah, there's, there's mm -hmm. a direct path of going, or we'll say New York. Yeah, you can go from Washington to New York if you drive straight through Montana, uh, North, uh, or well, Idaho, Montana, North Dakota, uh, Wisconsin, along the co northern coast, Illinois, uh, Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania. Boom, you in New York. That's a very direct path. You know what I mean? So you can accelerate your your time of getting to New York if you take that path. But you know, if you end up veering to the right and dropping down to Texas. You can still get to New York. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm in Texas now. Oh shit, I made, I rerouted my ass way out the way. Okay, let me start making my way towards Oklahoma and Arkansas. Oh shit, I'm in New Orleans. <laughs> I rerouted again. Hold on, hold on. Let me make, let me make my way to uh to Memphis, to Nashville, to Cincinnati, to Columbus. I'm on my way back to New York. Oh shit, I'm in Chicago. I rerouted again. <laughs> Hold on, hold on, hold on. I need to make my way to New York. 
Oh, no. oh I'm in St. Louis. <laughs> I'm trying to get to New York. Oh, now I'm down in Florida, in Tallahassee. <laughs> and then you finally make your way up the coast and you make it to New York. You still made it. You still reached your destination. You know what I mean? So, but it's but it's not necessarily about halting, just rerouting. Because you're always moving, you're always evolving. Universal law of evolution. You know what I mean? You're always you're always growing. But but it's it's all about, you know, yes, you you are destined for this existence. So it's not necessarily just life, but existence. You know, so but it's you all we all still have free will. You know I mean? So you can choose how you want to navigate. You know, you can choose which direction you want to go in and where you want to go. Because yeah, you you may have taken the route that goes to all those other cities to get to New York. And you might not have gotten there as soon as the other person got to New York. But you had a whole lot of other experiences in, in San Antonio, in, in in New Orleans, in Chicago, you know, in all these other places. You had all these other experiences, you had all these other trials and tribulations that helped you to understand also, you know. I may have made a choice that took me over this way that I thought was going to take me one way, but I ended up in a different direction. At the time, I thought it was it was bad. It was rough. Like, man, how did I get here? Why, do, why am I here? And then I understand, oh, it led me to experience this, to understand this. I wouldn't be able to, to, to know this without those experiences. I wouldn't be able to teach this without those experiences. I wouldn't be able to set up a lesson and understanding of this without having first learned that without those experiences, you know? So it's yeah yeah exactly what you're saying. Uh, I was just putting an analogy to it. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Beyond that, way more sense than what you said. That she yeah. said it's not necessarily halting; it's um, going to a different direction, but it's still mm -hmm. the same end goal. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, maybe maybe you start out not even going down to Texas. Maybe you just went straight down to San Diego. And so it's like, man, now I'm further away. You might feel like you're further away, but there's still value in that. There's still value in that. Yeah, yeah. So, but it's just like you said, you know, it's all your journey. It ain't never derailed. You, you're still on the path, whether whether you think you are or not. You know what I mean? Whether you're somebody who's here in this mentor program, or or you somebody who's you know doing all type of anything else. You mean know, you on your own path. You're on your own journey, and your journey is yours. Can't nobody else tell you what to do with it. You know what I mean, they can, you know, and, and they can help guide you, but you got to be the one to take those steps and to make those determinations, those fi that final that final say. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, anyways, we'll uh, wrap it up and get to rolling. I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. It was good to get back into these. Um, I'm gonna get started on the next, uh, the next course, and the next uh, uh, scriptures and the next uh, things for the uh, sacral chakra. All right, peace, peace.